In this video, I'm going to go over a slideshow about using Visual Studio Code to do a SQLite database, and I'm going to be using the SQLite 3 editor extension in Visual Studio Code, and then I'll try to do it at the end. Okay, so I am working in a lab where I already have Visual Studio, so Visual Studio Code, so I want to find it. Um, if you or working on advice that you don't have it, then you might want to go to Visual Studio Code. And also note uh, that you want Visual, I want, I'm working here with Visual Studio Code, not Visual Studio. Okay, so I open up Visual Studio. If you're opening it for the first time, it will ask you what theme you want. Um, if you like to work dark or light, if you need high contrast, etc. I'm going to choose, I think, light, light modern, I think is what I chose. Okay. Now we want to set up a place in which we are going to uh, make a database. So where we're going to have our database and our uh, queries and so on. So I go to the menu, I go to file, I go to open folder, and then the open folder dialog comes up. I'm going to choose documents there, sort of uh, like midway down on the left. And then there is across the top, uh, so also sort of toward the left, there is a new folder, I don't know, icon. Um, and when I click on that, it uh, I can make a, a new folder. So I'm making a sort of subfolder of documents. I call that a C240. That's the, the class I'm teaching. And then I clicked new folder again, and I made a subdirectory for quote DB because I'm going to make a database uh, about quotes. Then this uh, dialog popped up. Uh, do I trust the authors of the files of this folder? And uh, since I am the, the author of this file and folder, I said uh, yes. So I checked the box and clicked the button. I want uh, some extension. So uh, uh, Visual Studio Code is sort of like a small thing, and then you sort of expand its abilities with these extensions. I'm going to work uh, with an extension for SQLite. I'm, do I'm doing a database. I'm doing SQLite, which I can do within Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to use specifically an extension called the SQLite editor. I've also used the, the, the top one, the SQLite by Alex CVZZ. Um, and you have to write more, like I was using that one when I was working in Python and my Python was writing my SQL. Um, and now I'm playing around with the SQLite editor which is the uh, one that has more of a sort of a spreadsheet-like interface. Uh, so it will feel a little bit more like Access or MySQL. Um, you find this once you click on extensions, you will get a search bar. You type what you're searching, in this case, SQLite, and a bunch of options uh, pop up. And then um, I'm going to continue with the SQLite 3 editor sort of on the way down. Okay, so when I click on it, a tab opens up with that, uh, the SQLite 3 editor tab, and there's an installed button, and click on the install button if you decide you want this extension. I do, so I did. Um, briefly, there will that button that says install will turn into installing or something. I didn't grab a screen capture fast enough to show you that, but then when it's done, it becomes two buttons so that later on you can either uninstall or uh, temporarily disable the extension. Okay, so now I uh, want to first get rid of the extensions over there on the left. So I go back to the extensions icon on, on the sort of extreme left. And if I click on that, um, that's sort of... Uh, like a toggle. So it shows me the panel. It takes away the panel. So I have the panel. So if I click it again, it will take it away. So it closes the uh, extensions panel. 
And then I'm going to close that SQLite 3 editor tab then opened up by clicking on the X on that tab. Okay, now I'm going, now I want my Explorer. I had the, uh, the I think the Explorer was open briefly, but then when I opened extensions, it kind of replaced it. They sort of take up the same territory. So now I'm opening up the Explorer, which is that top icon over there on the left. And this is showing me that folder that I opened. So I started off early on and it said file open folder and made this quote DB folder. And now I'm, I've am i opened up the Explorer panel and it's opened it up to that folder. Okay. There are some icons uh, sort of on the, on the right-hand side of that panel near the top. Um, the, the one of them is the one I'm pointing to there with the big red arrow is uh, create a file. You can create uh, yet another subfolder if you want and so on. I'm going to create a file. So I clicked on the uh, the file with a little plus. I'm, I'm adding a file. And again, I'm making a database and uh, and I'm about quotes. So I call it quote DB. And the extension here is important because we are announcing to the computer, to the system, that this is a database that we are making. And then sort of hidden down at the bottom of the Explorer panel is some stuff related to a SQLite 3. So the main thing of Explorer is here's the folder that's open, here's the files in it. But we are uh, working with this SQLite 3 editor extension. And so it has some features and that can be explored and they are down there at the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm expanding that section. So we have the the arrow points sideways or down. So if it points uh, sideways, then I can expand it. If it's pointing down, then I can collapse it. So I wanted to expand it. There's nothing in there yet to see, but there will be. Okay, so I'm going to make a quote database. Just a little, just a little demo database with a few quotes and authors and so on in there. Um, and it's going to be something, I'm going to take some data and it's going to be something like what lies behind the Brainy quote site and, but by no means as extensive or anything like that. Just a little demo -y thing here. Okay. So I want to, uh, make a table. I want to make my first table. And so. I go over to that Explorer at the bottom, that thing I just expanded, and there is a plus icon there. Now, uh, up above, something that looked like that was to create a file, but down here in the SQLite section, it is to create a table. So if I click on that, it's going. it says that within the database, and I've already, I only had the one uh, quote DB database, so it knows which one I mean. If I had more than one, I'd probably have to say which which one I'm choosing, but it, it, it knew. And I'm going to make a table in it. So clicking on that uh, plus icon that you see on the left opened up a tab, the quote DB tab, and it's starting me up to uh, create a table. And when I first did this, I didn't screen capture it very well, but there was sort of this obnoxious sort of tooltip in the way. But if you click on the tooltip, uh, it will close it. Okay, so we have to figure out now that we're ready to make something, and we're only going to make the first table in, in this part, and then we'll make uh, another table later on and, and sort of uh, work towards finishing the job. But... Let's just talk about our database, the basic things we want to have. We want to have an author entity and a quote entity. So these are the sort of the things we want to. So we're reflecting something in the real world uh, and people have said things, uh, written them or said them, or they might be in a speech or in a book or what have you. But um, there are people who say things and then there are the things that are said. So these are going to be sort of our main entities in our database. We'll add more later. We have to think a little bit about the field. 
the author entity may have fields. It may want a primary key, an author ID to uniquely identify the author. Then the author might have first name, last name, nationality, what have you. The quote can also have an ID to identify the quote and have its text and other things. And then there is a relationship between these two things that uh, the author either spoke or wrote the quote. Okay, so we have this relationship between entities. And we need to examine this before we're ready to actually pick out, just finalize the fields we're going to have in our table. Uh, we want to examine a little bit more the relationship between these two entities. And an, a nice way, an important way to do that is to sort of make a statement about the relationship. And you make the relationship statement in two directions. Uh, you always start with a uh, or an uh, for the first entity. And each, you're going to state it in two directions. So each entity is going to have its turn at being first. But you're going to use a or an indicating that it's an individual, ent an individual instance of the entity. Um, and then um, we're going to sort of, you know, write in words what the relationship is. And then uh, when we get to the second entity, we're going to use the word one or many. So we're always going to start with a or an, and the other side is always going to be many or quotes. So here it is for this example. At least this is how we're going to code it here. We're going to say that an author is responsible for or can be responsible for many quotes. So people who are quotable often say many things and are quotable. But we're going to at least assume, and it's usually true, that a quote has this one author, that it was spoken by or written by one original author. Maybe somebody repeated it, but we want to give you know the attribution to the original author if we can. So then in the statements, uh, we see that that second, uh, you know, when we reach the second entity, one time we had the word many, one time we had the word one, and then so we refer to this relationship as a one-to-many relationship. And when we are making tables and we are going to have a relationship so that we're going to have tables to sort of correspond to entities and the entities have a relationship, when there is a one-to-many relationship, then we find the the part where the where, where there's a one the quote is by one author then when we're that tells us that when we're making the quote table that it can have an author id a single author id this is the easy way to make it so that means that our quote table is going to have the author id as a foreign key and this is how the quote table is going to reference the author table, how we are going to establish our relationship. And that tells us here, since the quote table refers to the author table, we should start with the author table. So that's what we'll do. So I'm just showing you here some of where I'm going to pull my information from. I started off with uh, the Brainy Quotes. I uh, clicked on Maya Angelou. She was on the home page. Uh, as there was a list of authors, I clicked on her, I clicked on her again, and up popped uh, some information about, uh, so, so first I got some Maya Angelou quotes, and then I got uh, some more information, like uh, when she was born and when she died, etc. Um, and in the URL on the, on the Maya Angelou page, the second one, um, that that Maya underscore Angelou underscore 383371, that might be um, her primary key in this database. I don't know that for sure, but it would be possible. It's just sort of first and last name and some number. So that might be some way to identify her in the database. So we're going to make the author table. We have to make a decision about the primary key. Um, primary keys are often behind the scenes. So some people will just say, if it's behind the scenes and you're not going to see it, then let's keep it simple and let's just have a number. And primary keys have to be unique. And so if you go with this number option, then you can tell the database management system to 
auto increment to, you know, you keep track of the numbers. You're responsible for making sure they're unique. I'm not going to do that. Um, sometimes people will want an ID that is a little more recognizable, has a little bit more meaning to it. Like, like if, if that was an, indeed the, uh, the Maya Angelou, uh, ID for the, uh, brainy quote, um, then, then that it was sort of recognizable as her, or you could uh, do something, not full, spell out her full name, sort of keep it simple, but, uh, you know, maybe some letters, like maybe first two letters of her first name, the first two letters of her last name and a number so that, uh, you know, something that is somewhat identifiable if you're working in the database to be not just so if you're in the bowels of the database and you're seeing these numbers should i be able to recognize them or not um but my scheme here could have a problem with if i were going to quote socrates or you know somebody with one name okay so let's make this table and i'm going to go with the uh integer auto increment in this example Okay, so there was a place again on on the down at the bottom on the left of my explorer. I clicked on this thing and said uh, create a table, and that gave me this uh, tab quote db tab, and it makes this create table. I add the name of the table. It's going my, my table is going to be called author, and then I start filling in my fields and my first field is going to be my primary key i'm going to call it author id i'm going to use the drop down list to say that its type is integer um the button there are all, all these buttons along the way um the primary key one is usually sort of highlighted and um i have to sort of uh turn it off or turn it on. So it was already on. I, I want this to be the primary key so I could leave it on or I could click it off and click it back on. And auto increment came up as a possibility and I said, yes, please. Okay, now I'm adding other fields. So I added, uh, it always gives you, you see there that it says the, at the bottom column name. So it's sort of prompting you for the next field that you haven't entered yet. But I've added my next two fields, the first name and the last name. And their types were text, and I clicked off. I did not want them to be the primary key. Okay. Um, depending on the size of your screen, especially vertically, um, you may lose track of the column name or the commit. And if that's the case, then just sort of go over onto the right-hand side and find the scroll and scroll down. But it is, depending on the size of your screen, um, you may uh, lose sight of some of these these things, but they, they are indeed there. Okay, so then I added uh, the profession, the nationality, the birth date, and the death date. Now, some databases have a specific type for dates or date times. Um, I didn't see that in the drop-down list, and even if it had been there, I wouldn't have used it. Uh, I find that the the dates in uh, databases are usually more sort of modern dates, and um, it is hard to uh, work with very old dates. So if I want to, in my quote database, if I want to quote anybody, uh, you know, Shakespeare or somebody like that, um, those very old dates, um, or Socrates, and, and any very old dates would be... Uh, hard to handle, so I'll, I'll handle them as text. And then when I enter uh, the dates, I'll just try to be consistent. Okay. Um, so I filled in all the fields that I want, and then I decided I am ready. I am, uh, in this screen capture you see here, I'm hovering over commit, and you see the, the SQL that it's going to write for me, that it's going to create a table called author with the various fields, the author ID is an integer and the primary key and auto increment, and all the other things were uh, text. And if I wanted to make some kind of SQL script to duplicate this, I, I can, as it says, right click to copy this, or I, I can get it later out of the database. Okay. Um, then I 
actually now clicked commit. So before I was just hovering over it, now I've actually uh, hit commit and now it moves to this uh, split screen, split vertically. And the top is for selecting, which is to look at the data that we have and then insert is below to uh, insert the, the, the records. And this is sort of a one by one. So it makes it look sort of like, you know, this this uh, spreadsheet looking thing at the top. It makes it look like, you know, if it were a sp spreadsheet that you could uh, type in those boxes. But, you know, when you're entering data, um, that is done in the insert section below. And the top is blank right now because we've just made this table and there is nothing uh, in it. Okay. So I was over on... Uh, Brainy quote and found my my Angelou uh, data and I'm entering it. So I'm down in the insert region, uh, first name, last name, profession. I didn't enter the number because it's auto incrementing. So I'm not entering the uh, author ID. It's just going to, it, it gives me that uh, hint there, that next integer that it's going to handle it and give me the, well, in this case, the next integer, the first integer. I add my Angelou Poet USA. I put in the birth date and the death date. Um, I'm putting them in as text, but I put them in a particular way of year, then month, then day, because if I want to sort, if I want to order things based on dates, um, that's the text version of dates that, uh, so that the text version of sorting and the uh, date uh, version of a sorting will agree. Um, but that's just, I didn't, I just typed it that way. So I didn't do anything to get it that way other than I know that that's a, sort of a useful format and I typed it that way. So then I commit. Commit's an important word in database to say, you know, nothing's really done until you commit. And so we we had to commit the design of the table. Now we have to commit this insert of data. And then I uh, added a second author, in this case, Groucho Marx. I also looked him up on uh, Brainy Quote and got his birth dates and death dates. He is a comedian. Okay. And then that's where we'll stop for this video, at least in the slideshow, and then I'm going to try to do it live in a second. But um, we didn't add the quote table. We're going to have the quote table refer to the author table. We haven't queried any of our tables. Um, and we might want to add other entities with other relationships, like maybe the, the subject, the topic of the quote. Um, so those are things that are coming. Okay. So let's give this a whirl. I'm going to look up VS code. Here's my VS code. Is it coming? There it is. I was impatient and now I have a bunch of them. Okay. So here is my VS code. I'm going to choose a light modern. And I'm going to close the welcome. I'm going to uh, open a folder. I'm going to go in documents, new folder. I'm going to make C240 like I did in the slideshow. I'm going to, I click to get into it. I clicked another new folder. I clicked it twice. So I made two of them. I don't want to, but let me make this one. Uh, the quote database and I can delete that one by right clicking okay and let me find that again I had those two quote I had those two folders and I was trying to go to the folder I deleted okay now I'm going to the quote folder which is in the 240 folder which is in my documents and I'm going to say that I trust myself. Not sure I should. Okay. So here's my explorer with my quote. I'm going to close this welcome tab now. I think I close it a little bit later in the slideshow. It's a little too big. 
All right, so now I want my extension. So I typed the extension. I wanted a SQL light, 1L and SQL light. Um, and uh, so, and I wanted the SQL light editor here and I get that tab and then I say, I want to install it. So it's installing for a little brief amount of time. And then there it is, it's installed. So I'm going to close the extensions and close that tab. I'm going back to my Explorer. I'm going to add a new file. It's going to be my quote.db file. Also, I'm making the quote uh, database. And then I'm going to uh, come down here. Now it's already sort of set up. Uh, so I can come down here and say, I want to add a table, but it's already sort of put me at a create table. Here's this obnoxious tool tip, click on it, it goes away. Here's another one, make it go away. Okay. So if I did not have this create table, I could get it down here by saying, hitting this button saying create a table. When I want a second table, that's where I'll go as well. So I'm making an author table. And then uh, the first uh, column was the author ID, which I'm going to choose to be an integer. It's going to be my primary key. It's going to be auto increment. And I'll leave that. Okay. The next one I think I want is the first name. Sometimes I like underscore. Sometimes I use what's called camel case. If I have two words like first name, I capitalize the second one. I don't like spaces in names of fields or names of anything for the most part. Um, so I'm going to have a first name. It's text. It's not the primary key. I'm going to have a last name. It's text. It's not the primary key. I'm going to have a profession. It's text, it's not the primary key. I'm going to have a nationality. It's text, it's not the primary key. You see then I've lost my commit, but if I scroll, I have not, okay. And then I have a uh, birth date um, text. See, I'm not seeing here any date time, but a lot of date, a lot of other databases will have such a thing. And death date. And strictly speaking, I don't know if that's a SQL light thing or specific to this extension I'm using. Um, but birth date, death date. I'm working both with text, none of them are primary keys. So I have an author, which is an integer, it's a primary key, it's auto-incrementing. And then I have first name, last name, profession, nationality, birthday, death date. Those are all text for me. I've lost my commit button, but I scroll and I get it back. And if I mouse over the commit button, it's showing me my SQL that it's going to create a table. So this is what we would say is within SQL, the data definition language. It's a uh, uh, it's not about working with data, but making the, the schema of the data. I'm going to hit the commit button. So now I have, I'm in quote DB now, I have the select, though there's nothing to select at this stage. And I have my insert. I'm going to find there is Maya Angelou, Maya Angelou, and here's her uh, death dates and birth dates and so on. So. Um, next integer, I don't do anything with. Her first name is Maya. Her last name is Angelou. She was a poet. She's from the USA. Her birth date is 1928, April fourth and her death date was 2014 May which is 05 and the 28th to 8 and then I need to find my commit and then there is my first record with Maya Angelou and then I'm going to go 
home and uh, search for Groucho Marx. He said some funny things. And hit Groucho Marx and Groucho Marx. Okay, so here's my information on Groucho Marx. And nothing in the author ID because it's auto increment. The first name we'll say is Groucho. At least that's a stage name. And Marx. And his profession was comedian. He's also from the USA. His birth date was 1890 in October, which is 10, second, which is 02. And his death date uh, was the 1977 in August 08 and the 19th. Okay, and then commit. So I have made, I used uh, Visual Studio Code. I added the SQLite editor uh, extension. I've used that extension to uh, create a table and to insert two records into that table. More to follow in later uh, videos. Thanks for your